from where we was uh, the other night on Wednesday night. John chapter 11 is going to be the passage of Scripture. talks about a man that actually had, was a friend of Jesus and, and uh, Mary and Martha was friends of Jesus also and their brother Lazarus got sick and they sent word to tell Jesus that he was sick and, and Jesus didn't make it in time for him dying, they thought, so they actually put him in a tomb and he'd been in there for three days and, and uh, Jesus has got to deal with all that. You know, we, we bring you back maybe to verse 32 where, where Mary there had, a, had been the one a, had come to a, where Jesus was. She saw him. She fell down at his feet and she said, Lord, if you'd have, if you'd have been here, my, my brother wouldn't have died. And you've got to remember about Mary. Mary's the one that broke the alabaster box, you know, uh, at, at Jesus' feet. And she was washing his feet with that ointment and, and with her hair she was washing that and it seemed like she was uh, really something else she was to do that because it was a year's supply maybe of, of wealth and all that and, and all the people got around her and said, I, well, you know, what are you doing all that? You're wasting the money. You know, you could have gave it to the poor and Jesus said, the poor you're going to always have. Always going to be poor, but I ain't going to be here for just a little while. And how we see that picture, how we ought to be doing for the Lord, and we ought to give our very best to the Lord, but sometimes he gets left over. But, but Mary, that day, she's, she's at his feet, and there's another person in this picture, and her name is Martha. And Martha was people like you guys were yesterday. Y'all was working, and, you know, you didn't get on the stage last night, and you, you, done, you know, y'all brought a lot of that gumbo with you, and somebody had prepared every bit of that stuff and, and, and y'all done wagged it all down here in the trailer and you done unloaded it and last night when the singing was going on y'all wasn't up here singing didn't get up here and say nothing you know and my Martha's kind of people like y'all are just, that were just in there working and, and doing and, and Martha that night didn't get much credit maybe she was kind of thinking about that sometime we can kind of think about that after we work we, we got them all you know we got them in this church that you know, they, they'll ask you, you know, what can I do? You know, is, is a situation the other night, I'll get myself in trouble right here if I don't watch it, but they'll ask you a question, what can they do? You say, well, just be here at 6 o'clock Saturday morning, help me do some cooking maybe, you know. That's, that's what I need, you know, just, just come on, what can I do? And, and not only they don't come at 6 o'clock to help you cook, they, they come five minutes before breakfast time and they leave right after they eat. You understand, they, they ask you, call them questions, you know, in the public, like, whatever I can do, you know. Well, Martha was this kind. She, she done been in there working probably hard, and, and Martha was that kind. She was in there working, and you just can't help every once in a while is, is when I walked through the doors this morning. I, I said to the ladies that was already cooking, they was here before 7 o'clock, and they, they that kind of people, uh, the Marthas of the world. And, and I walked in the door, and I said, y'all, I'm a little thinking what we need to do, what, what we need to do for these folks from the church down there in Louisiana. We, we can't let them leave here without something to eat. Maybe we can get them some pizza or something. We can do that. And that that been easy to do. And y'all could eat pizza. And I get to think about it. Everybody don't like pizza. I didn't say nothing. But they said, yeah, we can do that. And it didn't take Wanda Harwell just for a second. said, Brother Ed. Now look here. She didn't really have to have no more conversation with me because she's a mom. She's the one going to take care of stuff, and she ain't going to be the one saying no special, and, and she ain't, you ain't going to hardly get her on stage, but she's kind of a Martha. She goes right along with, with Peg in there, and Big Scott's in there, and Sister Pat in there, and Billy Lemon's in there. I mean, they just kind of, they the Marthas of a church, you know, and so they in there. So when, when she said, Brother Eddie, look here, I, we got what we need right here. We got everything in the refrigerator. We're going to make sandwiches. Now I went back in and said, we got hamburgers, we got hot dogs. So end result, like, we don't care what you do. We don't care who you send. they the mouthers of the crowd. But you got to get a hold of something now. That Mary got a lot of glory for breaking that alabaster box out. I mean, Martha, that, if you don't watch it, you'll read that thing. That's why you need to study the whole Bible to see what's going on because it, what it'll make you think is everybody just needs to go fall at Jesus' feet. Well, you'll starve to death doing that. Somebody got to fry some bologna. Somebody got to cook some banana pudding. Somebody got to make some gumbo. Somebody got to get things going on. So if you don't watch it, Louisiana folks, you'll get to be like that after you done worked and labored all that time. And then, then somebody just gets in the truck the last minute, and they'll be the ones standing over in the corner like, yeah, we got all this together and brought it all down here. They didn't come in their truck. They didn't use their money. They didn't do whatever. I mean, they just, they just the marriage of the folks. Look like when it comes time to be in a spot where everybody's going to get all the glory, see, 
seem like them marriages right there, wasn't nothing wrong with what Mary did. That's still a precious thing she done. But I, I got to get to Martha now. Now, Martha, when Lazarus had died, the woman that, that was at Jesus' feet and looked so good, she was in the house pouting. She didn't even come out, but if you'll read there, and we're not going to probably get over there. If you'll read about Martha, though, when, when Jesus was coming, as soon as she seen Jesus in verse 20, as soon as she seen him, she went out to meet him. The woman that was at his feet didn't come out. Matter of fact, if you'll read them verses on and on, it'll get to where Martha come back and said, he's asking for you, man. He'd want to know where that woman was that was kneeling at his feet. He'd, he'd want to know where that woman was at almost, if you could let your mind go a little bit now. I mean, we don't want to talk about things. You know, we won't talk about Peter in the Bible. We won't read Scripture, but we don't really want to say nothing. But that sorry rascal was the very one now that said he didn't even know him. See, we, we, we want to think about disciples, but we don't want to think about Judas, one of them disciples that sold him out. So sometimes it ain't always what it looks like. You know, it may be that that person married, maybe at that time, boy, she seen that as a good thing, and she had a start in that thing. But I, I, I won't tell you that them monsters impressed me a whole lot more. If you get ready to go build a church, if you get ready to have a one, if you get ready to have vacation Bible school, or you just get ready to have the door shut, somebody's going to have to be a moth in the deal. If you get ready for somebody to run the sound system, if you get ready for somebody to clean the floors, if you get somebody to take up the chairs when everybody else done eating gone, you better have you some moths. If you get you some moths, the marriage situation will take care of itself. And that ain't even what I'm preaching about. But I'm trying to catch you up to where we are. And so where we are was, and then we got to Wednesday night where Jesus had come and, and in verse 32, if I can start reading right there, and then when Mary was come where Jesus was, finally when Martha got her out of the house. Finally got Mary out of the house. Finally went over and said, look here, girl, you got to straighten up now. You, you're making the whole deal look bad. Now you and done broke that box out and you done done all that and here you are in here pouting about everything. And I, I'm going to try to preach about three different kind of folks. Now, I ain't just trying to be seminary that way to do that because I ain't been the one and, and, and that's all fine. But I, I could have said 10 and I could have said two, but I'm saying three. It's three different kind of folks I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the bride of Christ. And then I want to talk to you about the bound. I want to talk to you about the brood. Now, I ain't got a whole lot to say about the bound and the bruise. But don't expect a whole lot about it. But I want to, before you leave here, I want you to understand some things about the bride. I want you to understand this. I'm going to get a point across, no matter how long it takes. Don't expect a whole lot. Sister Mary, don't expect a whole lot. I could have studied more, and I could have spent more time, and I could have woke up 2 o'clock, Carla, and I could have talked about the bruise. And you know, a lot, a lot of folks wouldn't. They say they're bruised. Now, they, they save folks, but now they bruised. I ain't going to tell you they saved and bruised. I ain't going to give you that out. Now, if you saved and bruised, you work it out with God, but I ain't giving you that out. Now, I could talk to you about people that's bound, and I, I could talk to you about people in church that's bound up things, and, and I could say, but they saved, they just bound. I ain't going to give you that out. I ain't going to say that. But I'm going to have a whole lot to say about the bride. I like this thing. This thing will work, you hear me? So I'm going to try to read right here. I'm going to try to read. And when Mary was come with Jesus, she finally came. She finally come out of the house. And just about the time she comes out of the house, boy, we want to start giving God. Can you imagine? Have you ever just worked yourself plumb to dead? Huh? I mean, just been doing something when you ladies around vacation Bible school, you know, done made some cookies and stuck the fork in them, you know, and everything, done baked them, got them. I mean, go, going in the church house, you know, I, I think about the wife, I loaded up her deal this morning for children's church. I mean, you just loaded up with stuff, you know, when, when on Saturday they were just doing what they want to do. You got up early, you studied all day, and you made some cookies, and you made out some things for the kids and all. You just kind of loaded down, you know, and somebody meets you at the door. I mean, they meet you at the door, and you just load it down. All, I'm thinking about Jesus now. Here he's coming on the scene, and Mary's coming, and all she's doing is coming, giving Jesus some demands, tell him how low down it was and all. I mean, here she's coming, loaded down. 
Think about people working, Brother Don. They just load it down with work. I just want to put it in just an everyday life, Brother Don. Is maybe you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, Brother Sammy gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. You just load it down, man. You just, man, you just can't keep it all going on. God's blessing where you can. And, and you know, somebody will meet you there. You just load it down. Boy, finally done got everything going, and you just load it down. And about 8 o'clock, somebody shows up and says, Well, you know, I, I need some help. I ain't worked eight months. You ain't done nothing? I mean, you know, McDonald's would have probably hired you. I mean, there's leaves to work. There's something to do. Boy, I need some help out of it. I just kind of been down on my luck. No, you've been lazy. And I ain't getting on that. I done been on that. I don't want to get on that. Chad, I don't want to get on that. I don't want to get on that. You, Anthony, you just load it down, just doing all you can, just trying to, I mean, if somebody just comes, boy, look at Mary. Done been in the house pouting. Martha done went out there and talked to him. Martha had to come and tell her, look, you need to get out of here. The man you done made such a big fuss of, uh, the man you done went and worshipped every Sunday morning, the man you done said this king of kings and lord of lords, he knows you in the house. He's wanting to know how you done broke that box up and you ain't wanting to come meet him. I'll tell you one thing I found. If you have an encounter with Christ every day and when you wake up in the morning, you have a Martha attitude. Look here, you, wherever he's at, boy, when you hear he's around and when you hear he's doing something, Carla, you're going to be right where he's at. It don't matter how bad the situation is. It don't matter how bad something's going on. You're going to be right where Jesus is at. Martha heard Jesus around. He went to get her. Now he said, Mary. He said, Mary, you need to come on out. Here comes Mary. Been in the house, pout. Going to tell Jesus what a bad job he's doing. Lord, I don't know why you're doing this to me. Don't that sound like, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through it. Well, look at the ship you're sailing on. It don't make no difference what you're going through. Look, man, look, look, look whose arms you in. Look at them songs, you know, something. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. God, I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. You ain't going to make it. You couldn't make it. You didn't make it. You ain't going to make it. He done made it. Hallelujah. Woo! Who in the world you think you are? Yea, though I walk through, yeah. Brother Rex, we'll make it, won't we? Yeah. We'll make it with Jesus. We can still do all things. Yeah. Boy, last night, the wife was talking about this morning. Boy, they did that drama. I hope they do 105 dramas this morning. I, I don't even care. Look here. Man, they got them balloons. I, I told that woman, I ain't learned her name yet, but look here, she's up here. And man, she had them kids going. I said, my word. I told her after, I said, you got some bowlers. You hear me? Man, you had that little old fella up there. Boy, he's sitting right here. He, wait, he knew he had a part in this thing, and he just wanted in it. He knew this thing was going to get good, and that's the way we ought to be. Look here. God's got something going on. He just sitting right there, son, and said, look here. I'm going to jump on this thing when my time comes. I ain't going to be like getting laid in by the pool. First one got in the water when it was troubled, you know. And he said, every time I get ready to get in, that little fella right here, boy, he got them two thumbs down. He's a little cowboy ant. I wish he could have seen him. You can do it again today if you want to. It don't make no difference to me. But look here. He said, when I get into my part, and look, when he got up on that table, they turned them balloons on with God's promise. I, I could see they just kind of eased him up there. They meant for him to ease up there. That's the way we do. <laughs> see, we just want a God. I, you know, we don't think God's that big, so we just like, oh, Lord. You know, oh, I hope, I hope you can carry me. Well, that's what he was supposed to do. But he's a child like faith. See, he don't know no better. And when he got up on it, he just went to jump it up and I wish you could have seen it. It was balloons by God's promise on the table. They turned the table over and the balloons was on it and it was God's promise and they put that little man. He didn't know no better. It was God's promises. You know what I'm talking about? He don't even know all about what he's doing right there. He just don't know how good he preached last. I mean, he's already in the ministry. He's already done preached as good a message as Billy Graham is ever going to preach because he didn't know nobody. He just... Come on, preacher. I'm having myself a good time. It don't make no difference. Then Mary was come where Jesus was. She saw him and she fell at his feet saying unto him, Jesus, I'm sure glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. You can leave it up there if you want to, Brother Jacob. That'll help me. I won't have to take my glasses on. 
I'm so glad you're here. You come to take away the sins of the world. You already been healing blind folks. You done made the death here. Blind is sin. Folks is crippled. They done put a man through a roof. You looked up and seen her faith. Told him to take up his bed and walk. Cripple man by a gate. Peter and John, them two guys, I know them well. And they done come by the gate. Said, silver and gold have a number. What I have, I'm going to give to you. Said, I just can't wait to see what you're going to do with my brother Lash. What do you think? Said, do you think you can do it one more time? Church, I mean, where are we at? Are we, are we in doubt with God? Are we saying, God, I don't know if you can get me out of this thing. I don't know if this thing's too big. Are we going to be a married that sits at home and finally when we get to the place that we're going to trust God for something, whether it's starting a business, whether whatever it is, whatever it is. Said, God, I know for sure that you king of kings and you Lord of lords. Neil, you already done proved yourself way before now. God, I ain't got no reason to doubt what you're going to do. Lord, I just can't wait to see you walk up in this tomb of this thing. God, I can't wait. Look what I'm in. Look at It looks like I'm bruised. It looks like I'm bound. A stone done been rolled, but I can't wait till you get to walk up that thing. Boy, I, I done invited the whole town out. Woo, God's good. Mary. Fell down at his feet. That looks good. That looks good, don't it? Don't matter what you do up here if you ain't going to walk it out. If you ain't going to jump it down, it don't matter about the drama. If you're going to go to school next week, youth, it don't matter about the drama. If you're going to go to school next week, no money over crying. Don't matter how many skits you put on church, it don't make no difference how much how much missionary work you do. It don't make no difference if you ain't going to walk it out, if you ain't going to get there like a little cowboy and just jump up and down on it. She fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, he, he must say, you must have me confused somebody else. <laughs> if you was Lord, you wouldn't say that next sentence to me. If I was Lord, if I was the man now, I mean, I, you've been calling me Jesus, that's fine, that's my name. But you, you must have the word because you finna say another sentence because he's all knowing. He knew what she's going to say before she got there. He done set the whole bunch up anyway. He just wanted to challenge them a little bit. And the Bible talks about it all the time. He says, be happy when you have to endure affliction, bro. And knowing that God is going to reveal himself. I mean, just be joyful in it all. But man, we don't do that. You're going to sing for me in the next service, you know. What I mean? <laughs> Kelly Lynn, you got out of that, Chris. That's next time. Woo! Lord, if you'd have been here. He said, wait a minute. He said, I'm the lily of the valley. Wait a minute. I'm the bright morning star. Wait a minute. I'm the great I am. I'm the God that healeth all diseases. Wait a minute. I'm the, well, look here. Look, I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. You got me wrong. My name is Lord. If you'd have been here, but I want to show you something out here, and I ain't got to where I want to preach yet. I got to catch you up. It ain't my fault you wouldn't hear Wednesday night. You folks from Louisiana should have come early. When Jesus saw her weeping, look here. He wouldn't have died when he saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. Done got a hold of all of them. That's when most folks cry, ain't it? Huh? Boy, if we shed some tears just thanking him. He said, look here. Came with her. He groaned in his spirit and he was troubled. He was troubled about it. Look at that next verse. He was troubled about it. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, he was troubled about Mary and Martha. And so when he was troubled about that, he come in that and, when, and, when, and he said, where have you laid him? Let's get down to some business. Where have you laid him? Why, why are you going on and on? And he said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus himself wept over it. What a compassionate God. Amen. What a compassionate Jesus. Jesus cried, y'all. Jesus cried. Now, see, you think when you're going through things sometimes, that, you know, like Johnny Watson right here, I, you know, and Johnny's needing something. And in and, 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 and the morning, Johnny, I keep going over it. We, you know, we thought Allie wasn't going to come. And Gwen was sick back in the nursery. And it wasn't going to happen. And, 
I mean, Jesus didn't say, Hail Watson's calling you, Lord. Man, Jesus wept with you, man. It, I mean, he hurt when you hurt. He, it, the only thing that will move God is a broken heart. That's, that's all that's going to move God. Something like that's going to move him. <laughs> he, uh, he's moved when we move toward him to do faith. Without faith, it's impossible. Please, God, so he was moved with that. And then let me go on. And some of them said, could not. This man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused even this man should have not died. And Jesus said again to him, groaning in himself, come to the grave. Hmm, that would preach. And it was a cave and a, sta- and a stone laid upon it. And he said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time he stinks. He, it's done over. It's done too late for he hath been dead for four days now. And Jesus said to her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldest see the glory of the Lord? And how much preaching could be in that? Man, if you could just believe, boy, if you could just trust God, if you just thought God was going to move today, how would this service be different? Then they took, and that ain't what I want to preach about, and then they took away the stone from the place where he was dead and where he laid. And he lifted his eyes, up his eyes, and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heard me always. I knew that there ain't never been a time that you never left me, that you never forsake me, that you was with me always, even to the end of the world. There was not no problem with me. Jesus said, I just want you, Father, to understand right here that I'm not the one in doubt. I'm just saying this, but I ain't the one in doubt. I ain't never not not trusted you. Wow, what if we could be that way? Not any what I'm preaching about. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, and he said to Lazarus, and that could preach all by itself, but that ain't what I'm preaching about. And he said, come forth. And he, was, and it, and he that was dead came forth bound, hand and foot with grave clothes and his face bound about with a napkin, and Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. And I could go on to say some things, but I, I've got to finish, but God's gave me some things to wrote down here. And I, now, that bruised person, without looking over here, with that, with that person that's bruised, I, 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 would say that, uh, I, I would say that that person would probably be Mary. She was bruised. She was bruised, and we, we could say a lot of things about bruised, those that may, maybe then got their feelings hurt. Mary was right there and then got her feelings hurt. Emotions done ro- went high. You know, you got a people that's, that's, that's that, that way, and, you know, they're not steadfast in anything they're doing. They'll show up sometimes for a big deal. It'll look like a lot of glitter on them. I mean, they'll show up just like a rushing mighty wind sometime, and then they'll fizzle out. She wasn't one always abound, and if she was, she'd have been running with Martha to find Jesus. Not enduring, just tossed to and fro with any wind of doctrine. She didn't go to a revival at any church. She didn't hear anything preached. It don't make no difference. She don't study for herself, you know, but she's moved at times about things, especially when the music gets loud and gets real loud. She'll be the first one. Come on in. already started all right she's those that's bruised then then those that, that's bound you know that that, that, that they bound and, and I was reading a while ago about about the word of God and it's, it's, it was talking about in Matthew 16 I wish I could go over and, and read it it says and whatever you you bind on earth It'll be bound in heaven. I, I hear people come and say, I'm going to bind this in the name of Jesus. And, and so what we're going to talk about is whatever's bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. So where I come in this context, this thing, it's, I, I think it's the word of God. Those folks that are bound to me is folks that either don't know the word or they don't stand on the word. And so, so they don't bind it to be the truth, so it can't be bound in heaven. They don't, they don't really say it to be the truth. They ain't like the little cowboys standing up on top of the balloon, on top of the table, jumping up and down. They them kinds like, I don't know if I should get up there or not. I don't know whether I ought to get involved in this or not. I don't know whether I ought to participate in this or not. I mean, they just them kinds that ain't going to get up there. 
They the kinds that would look at the lady here that was doing it all last night. Wayne, Joe, why, what's your name? Tracy. They the one that would look at Sister Tracy and they would say, are you sure I could get up? I mean, they would look, I mean, they would get up and look like there ain't nothing sticky on the floor now, is it? I mean, what if it was a piece of glass down there? And that's what we do. I mean, when God's wanting to move, we're at the hospital room. What if the doctor makes a mistake? I mean, what if he ain't got his sleep last night? I, I mean, I know God can, but what if, what if, what if? They them kind of folks. But I won't come talk to you. I won't talk to you about them bound. Yeah, you can't do nothing with them people bound. You can't do nothing with them folks bound. You, you, can't, you can't do nothing. They, they bound. I mean, they, they, they won't lose God's word. I mean, they just bound up in the self. They just, can't, they just cannot trust God for nothing. They will not trust God for nothing. They'll be the first one to say, my word, I don't know why I went through all this because you ain't standing on his promises. Tracy, that's the reason why you ain't getting nothing done. You got to stand there. Amen. We'll get off of that. I'm going to talk about those that's in Christ, though. Those is in Christ, the bride. The one that he's going to come back for, the church. I want to talk to you about the church. I ain't talking about the church building. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about a people. A people done trusted God by faith. they not leaning on their own understanding anymore. In all their ways, they, they're acknowledging God. Every time you try to come to one of them, said, I don't know about it. So, well, and, and the one, that, the, the bride, the church, they'll say, but God said. Yes. We'll be like a tree that's planted by the water that can't be moved. Said, so look here, all I know is I done dug a well, man, and it's done, I done drank from something, and he told me if I drank of this water, I won't never thirst again. I'm talking about the bride now. The church ain't going down. The old ship of Zion ain't going down. The old church is going to be here. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God's going to last forever. When he comes back, he's coming back for a bride, so the church ain't in trouble. The bride ain't in trouble. It may be people in trouble, but the church ain't. Man, we was at a men's ministry meeting the other night, and we was there, and Brother Durwood Wordy, a, a, a friend of mine was there. He's, he's older than I am. I, he, his, I've known him all my life. When we was in the other churches I was raised up in, I mean, his folks were there, the Wordy family, they was there. And my, he was telling the other day about my granddaddy. I, I got out to speak, and it's the Lord was just in the, in the place, wasn't it, Brother Mickey? And I mean, God was just moving in, in the place, and, and, and Durwood said, I got to tell you something about his granddaddy. He said, my daddy and his granddaddy used to preach on the court square in Brownsville, Tennessee, and they was preaching. And they was preaching about how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And they was preaching about how he's a God that healeth all diseases. I'm going to tell you something. It's good to be from a good heritage. My granddaddy wasn't a wealthy man, but in a way he had more wealth than anybody. I mean, I remember being in the station wagon. I, I remember seeing his little car in a toolbox with a handle in it. I, I remember what riding, I believe, Sammy, it was a Ford station wagon. I, I can remember that. But, but anyway, they was telling a story about my granddaddy, and they was preaching about how God would heal you. He would do a miracle in your life. And a man come up to him and said, Look here, if y'all believe what y'all preaching, my wife's at home and hadn't walked in years, and she's at home. If y'all believe what you're preaching, I'd like y'all to come to my house. His daddy, my granddaddy, went to the woman's house, read in James chapter 5, how if you can get the elders of the church and come by and anoint them with all and pray the prayer of faith, it would heal them. They read it out of the book how Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. They read it out of the book, Barbara, how he said, by, by, by his stripes we healed, Big Daddy. You know, and there's people who could get up and say, my granddaddy was Sam Walton, and he started all the Walmarts, and that's fine and good. My granddaddy, he was the first one to make a light bulb. That's all good and fine. My granddaddy, he's the one that been trained. That's fine. I want to tell you about my granddaddy. My granddaddy and Durwood's father went to this woman's house, prayed for this woman, told her what the Bible said, and they said, what you think, sister? She said, I think 
that y'all done read out of God's word. Y'all done unloose this thing on me. It ain't bound no more. Look at y'all done unloose God's word and y'all done read it out of that Bible right there and y'all done anointed me with oil just like that Bible said. Y'all done prayed the prayer of faith just like that Bible said. And boy, I love what you said. She said, if y'all grab me by each hand and get me up on my feet, I think I'll walk out of here. Woo! What a hand. What a hand. If y'all just grab me by each hand, I ain't feeling nothing, but I'm ready to put y'all's faith with my faith like the woman with the issue of blood said if I could but touch the hem of his garment and Jesus said something has left my body and I think I'm going to be okay now. I got to get done. The bride. The bride of Christ. The bride of Christ, and I think about Durwood in a few minutes. Whenever it gets time, you can turn it on. I don't care. It won't bother me. I don't care. I don't care. You just do what you need to do, Jason. Durwood, that same man, told that story. That shouted. He was happy. He had his guitar. He told us about he done lost his wife a few months ago to cancer. He walked all over that church and said, y'all, I'm struggling. I won't tell you I ain't struggling. My wife's got everything. She's in glory. I got no need to be sorrowful. I, I got no need to be down in dumps. I know she's got it all, man. She's in a place where we're preaching about where we want to go. I don't know why I'm going through all this. I don't know why I feel like this, but y'all, I'm hurting. At the end, Charlie walked around the church. He said, y'all, I'm hurting. He said, I had surgery on my knees a couple years ago. He said, look out, I'm having that same pain again. I don't know if I'm going to have to have that surgery again or not. Whew. I looked at the other preacher. I said, you know what's been happening here, don't you? We've been rolling blue jeans, britches legs up. We've been grease them all, legs down. We went to rolling them britches legs. He, his legs ain't but this long anyway, ain't he? Belly's out here. He's going to get me. He sees this thing's live now. It's all over the world. It ain't hard to pick up no more. Boy, and them tears rolling down his face. He said, I believe it. I'm an old man. I've told my pastor. I've told, I've told my church. I'm, I'm through pastoring. I'm going to go into evangelism. It don't seem right. Old as I am. The health I'm in. The shape I'm in. A lot of folks will look at Durwood Worley. And they say to Durwood, they say, Durwood, look at you, man. You're done. You're over. No, he ain't over just because you see somebody weeping, man. When you get to a place, you can just weep and shed some tears, man. Said, y'all pray for me because I know God's going to work it out somewhere. That man ain't in trouble. The one's in trouble sitting at the house like Mary don't think God can do it no more and he ain't going to do it no more. The one that ain't in trouble is the one like Martha done run and met him. I want to tell you a story right here. It's because we're going through things. The church may be going through some things. The church may be beat, beat on. The church may be run down. The, ch the church may not be understood as the world looks at us. And we have people in the church like we, and Greta, that last year went through cancer too. And Greta lost all of her hair. And she wore that bogging cap around here. And now she's got her hair. She's got a hand up in the air. I don't know why in the world we ain't praising God about it. I, I don't know. Good Lord. Sister Barbara, you the one that come told me about that grandbaby had a hole in the heart and all that's over and all that's done with. We got enough stuff to shout about. We got enough stuff to run about. If God don't never do another blasted thing, if we all fall, fell dead on the track right here, Ed, we, look at we blessed, you hear me? The world don't understand it. But I want to tell you about the church. The church is victorious. I don't know if you're in it or not. I don't know if you're in it or not. The church, the church is victorious. Well, uh, Brother Ed, I'm kind of bound. I, I don't know about that. I know the Bible says we can do all things through Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against us can prosper. I know what the Bible says. The Bible says that we victorious. The Bible says if, if we, we, we're like somebody when we lose or save and we get to the point that we ain't victorious. I don't know if you'll go to heaven like that or not. you got to work all that out. If you want to play that old sad tune, say, now y'all still saved, 
Y'all still saved. Y'all just kind of discouraged right now. Maybe y'all going to come on. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible said when the salt loses the savor, it's good to throw it out the back door because it ain't good for nothing. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says when you're down there hunkered down, it says, I don't really want to go to Tennessee. I, I don't think I'm supposed to be a part of this. I just don't know if I can. That ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said you ain't supposed to take this candle and this light you done coming to because you come out of darkness and hide yourself under no bushel and have yourself no pity party. That's what the Bible said. He said you just set yourself on a hill somewhere. Now that's just what the Bible said. Now, if you don't care what the Bible says, then you can go have your pity party and you can make excuses for your children. You can make excuses for your daddy. You can make excuses for your granddaddy. You can make excuses for your cousin. You can make excuses for all. And you can say something contrary to the Word of God and you say, I still think to say, brother, but that just ain't what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you where I stay. I don't care when you agree with it. I'd rather have somebody that just drank a six-pack of Budweiser this morning that had a heart to come to church because they know they need to quit it and they know they don't need to do it. That have some folks that said they ain't got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and ain't even got a desire to go to church. I'd rather have a prostitute that done prostituted all night but got up this morning and something in her heart said, man, you need to get to church. I'd rather have a drug addict that smoked drugs all night long and done them, but he got up this morning and said, but I got a heart that I know ain't wrong and something in me ain't allowing me to do that, but I ain't got no time for folks and us making excuses for people after God done blessed them, Donnie. And they come to church every now and then they won't support the ministry of the church. They won't get involved in it. And they just show up just like a married boy. They want to tell everybody what they ought to do. Just like Mary and run out there and told Jesus what he need to do. And we'll make excuses for them. I tell you what you better do. You better get in an altar. And I don't care how many times they come to church. I don't care what they done told you. I don't care how many Bible verses they tell you. I don't care how early they get up in the morning. I'd rather have somebody with the Spirit of God in them say, look, I got to go to church. I know I'm wrong, but I got to get where Jesus is. I'd rather have a Martha than a Mary every once in a while does something for God. I'll tell you about the church church is going to be here. The church is going to be victorious. Church, I wrote down, the church is going to be, I can't see it on there, I wrote it down. The church is going to be going. The church is going to be glowing. You can't have Christ in you, man, not have a smile on your face. Know ye not that you not your own? Did you not know that? Amen. Brother Ed, you telling me something. Know you not that you're not your own? Know you not that you done been purchased? That you was nothing? On your way to hell? No way out? A point of no return? And Jesus done reached down in the mar of all that stuff in the mess you was in? Even though your sin stunk in the nose of God, reached and got your... Mm, mm, mm. My! My! done pulled you out and put you on a rock right with that scripture says heaven and earth shall pass away brother Jason Peter come to him some, let me make you understand something this plan look here them bound folks I wrote something else down this morning God gave me them bound folks them bound folks is people they bound because they don't have an understanding of his plan. They don't have an understanding of his perfect, of his purpose. They don't have a, an understanding of his perfection. They walk up. They got drama in their life. Look here. Their whole deal is about drama. They show up at your church crying every Sunday. Whoo! Whoo! Boy, you pray for them. Hallelujah. They put their hands up in the air. Do you believe? You can push them back. They'll stagger back. Uh, uh, yeah, I got it. As soon as they get home, 
They call you on the phone. Says, Sister, when you left the church, we thought you was going to stand on God's promise. Oh, I don't know. They love drama, boy. Boy, they ain't coming and say, Boy, ain't God good, boy. Woo, Jay, I heard you was going through it. We coming out of it, boy. We sure are, Brother Eddie. No, they, you done cried all night all by yourself. Come to church this evening. Somebody to encourage you. And they come around like, I just want you to know, brother, I'm praying for you. I just hope God be faithful to you. He got to be faithful to you. He done promised to be faithful to you. God's people. They victorious. The church. I'm talking about the church now. I'm talking about what ain't going to go down. You ain't got to worry about it. Can't, can't no politician mess it up. Can't no woman take out of school, take prayer out of school and mess it up. Can't nobody mess up the church. They the bride of Christ. They what he's coming back for. The church is victorious and the church is vibrant. Yeah. Just to put it in terms like this, my sweet little wife, she loves to watch Zorro. <laughs> Y'all watch Zorro? Good. You won't go to hell for watching Zorro, will you? Sure. <laughs> so anyway, you know that girl, she uh, she liking Zorro pretty good. <laughs> and so anyway, her daddy or something catches her, you know, with Zorro. And she used the word, Carla, she said, he's vigorous. He moves me. <laughs> he's doing something to me. And how much more Christ? Man, he's vibrant. I mean, we vibrant in him. I mean, he lives. We done been bought with a price. We done been paid for. And our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to call him up. He's already up. We don't have to lean on him. He's in us. He said, learn of me. <laughs> learn of me. Them people that are bound, look there. They don't know God's plan. They don't know God's purpose and they don't know God's perfection he didn't leave any loopholes man he didn't leave any fine print I got some more stuff y'all ready to go y'all got anywhere to go look here not only he, we victorious not only we vibrant we committed because we, we at least know the commandments we know them we can't put no other gods before him the church now, the church is committed. The church just don't pop in every once in a while. The church. That's sheetrock, y'all. That's pianos. They got them in bar, bar, beer joints, everything. Look at Mickey Gilly, El Elvis Presley, Ray Charles. All of them had one, man. No big deal about that piano. But I'm talking about the church. The church is committed. That's why it's a church here. What if the church wasn't committed? It wouldn't be no church. So I can tell you, there's a church somewhere. There's people somewhere, Wayne, that's committed. That's why it's still a church. It wasn't my three of them boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo. So if you're somewhere, Wayne, it seemed like you got it all. Just think about, Lord, they was faced with it all. And it wasn't but three of them. Everybody else done bow down. Everybody else done give up. And old Shadrach, Meshach, and Bingo said, I ain't, we ain't. <laughs> Our God will deliver us. <laughs> we ain't running out of there. We ain't telling God what he can't do. We ain't telling God he's late. Man, we running around saying, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, 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 he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Well, he may not come when you want him. But he'll be there right on time because he's an on-time God. I ain't quitting. He's victorious. He's vibrant. He's committed. That church, and he's on fire. Y'all know one of my favorites. Jeremiah said, I wouldn't say nothing, but I didn't hear that word in my heart. 
I done loosed it. I ain't got it bound no more. I done loosed. Look here. I done trusted God. I believe in the Word. I'm jumping on top of the table. I'm getting on top of the balloon. I'm jumping up and down. I'm on fire about this thing. The little old fella had to show us something last night. I ain't just easing up there. That's what Joe will do. I don't know no better. And Ray Wade, that's where he said we got to come. Like a childlike faith. But we get old and we get stubborn and we get to figuring out and we get to studying and we get it all figured out and we don't think God do no more. And that's why we're sitting where we're sitting and we're soaking like we're soaking and we're sour like we're sour. Boy, if God could, you better be glad for his plan. Because I tell you what, if he could come and unzip his mercy off you right now, just shoo, right where you sit. So how's that feel? He could take his love. He could take his grace, his mercy. Just come and just pull it off of you right now. Like some folks believe. Like some denominations believe. He could just come and just take it off you. Boy, you sit there just in. Ooh. Boy, you sit in a place where you are full of grace and mercy knowing you ought to be going and glowing and, and getting after it, boy. And all of a sudden you say, ooh, I don't feel good. Yeah. What if that burden, Brother Donnie, that John Yon and Isle of Branch, Mississippi, you and Bessie Bowl, what if that burden, look here, God took his grace and his mercy and his love and his compassion off of you right now and put that right back on you right now, Bessie. That, all that right back on you, Donnie. That, them same wants and desires you had, that same you was going through, Bessie. He just took his love and mercy and salvation off and just throw it back on you. You said, ooh. Knowing about the Holy Spirit of the Lord knowing about the Holy Ghost of God, knowing about how good it feels, knowing how, how good it feels. He lives, he lives salvation to in part. You ask me how I know he lives because he lives in my heart. What if he come and jumped out of your heart just for a minute? So how does that feel? Yeah, if you're the church, you victorious. Oh, yeah, you vibrant. Oh, yeah, what was that last thing I told you was? Y'all ain't even listening to me. Y'all don't want to sleep out there. Why well, ain't you got a pen writing this stuff down? That's what I try to keep. Look here. You're committed. You're on fire. And you're eager. I'm talking about if you're the church. I'm trying to convict you. I could tell you, no, you just bruised. You're on your way to heaven. That's fine. Well, you know, brother, Ed, about the prodigal son. You know, he left home. He went up. You just reel that thing all you want to. You just say, hey, man, am I okay? You just get out there on that dive more. Can I do this much, brother, Ed? Am I okay? Can I miss three more Sundays? I'm okay. Can I miss Sunday night? Am I okay? Can I not work in vacation Bible school? Am I okay? Can I not give? I'm okay. Can I not go to Tennessee? Am I okay? Look, you just make all them. You eager. And you on fire. I'm going to try to stay with it. Boy, I love this. And boy, God gave you selling on. You selling on. Woo! Boy, here comes, boy, here comes a big old tidal wave coming. Woo, boy. It boy, that thing just rolls on over. But you're selling on. Here comes a big old spear, boy. Sticks inside that ship. But this ship is unsinkable because it's God's perfect plan. And you know with God you can't fail. Look at it. And there's a whole big old boat coming through the side of the boat, boy, with that big wave. And it just sticks up. And boy, everybody, the people's looking over, but the church said, it'll be okay. Say, Grad and William, nobody. Can't. Don't even know if you want to even have treatment or not. It's so bad. Woo! Rammed you right in the side, boy. Mm. Y'all remember Jerry Lawler around here? The church is the, is the one that falls back against the rope, boy. They didn't hit them the last time. They fall back. Oh, I kind of black a little bit. Ray knows. Running outside. Go lift them pups out because folks done beat on you so bad and you get that boat. All of a sudden you just reach on and get you a Holy Ghost strap right there and just. Yeah. And you do like old Wayne did me in the kitchen. Said, you need to get out of here. <laughs> and they look at you in the eye and you think you're better than they are like a lot of folks think. You know, with the devil, you think you're better than you are, but you look at him this way and say, oh, I ain't, I ain't backing up no more. Kind of go on just a little bit further. They're selling on. And they're a witness after you receive the power. They'll be church. They'll be a witness. That's right. It'll always go on because they'll be a witness. And they'll be the ones that's in power when everybody else is failing. They'll be the ones, the church. What if you didn't have a church? 
What if you didn't have a bride of a little old lady, a little old man that come up when you six and man, I prayed all night for you. I weeped for you last night. What if you didn't have a church to do that? Look at there's somebody going to be praying on your behalf all the time. Ain't that something that he told Peter? said, Peter, Peter said, uh, he told Peter, he said, Peter said, uh, Satan, This is what he told somebody in the church now. He said, Satan desired to sift you as wheat. Just called you saved, he won't sift you. Just called you saved, he wants to knock you out of church. No, not knock you out of church. He won't knock you out of that building. You're kind of going and visiting every Sunday. Oh, Brother Jason, I know I won't, what I won't tell him. Right, right in that same spot where it talks about whatever's bound on heaven shall be bound on earth, and bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, loosed on earth. Right in that is where Peter said, upon this rock, he, Jesus told Peter. He said, upon this rock, upon this rock, those folks are bound not knowing God's perfection, don't understand where Peter said, now upon this rock, I'm not going to build just some folks just walked in. I'm going to build a church. And the church, the bride, the one I'm coming back for, the gates of hell, you can get them no matter how tall they are. Man, all hell's coming against me. Well, that's good. That's what you ought to say. Because you just noted one thing, William, that they ain't going to come against God. He said the gates of hell seem like the devil himself. That's a good thing because Satan's already been defeated. Y'all ain't got to shout my word. Y'all ain't got to. That's too good a preaching. Should have done took up four offerings for all this. Good Lord. The church, the church, the one he's coming back for, he, they love serving Christ. The church is on the battlefield. It don't make no difference how hot it gets. The church has got a risen mentality. They know they got a Savior that's already conquered death, hell, and the grave. They got a conquering mentality. They got a challenging mentality. It don't make no difference. Like It's just a challenge to me because I know God can do it. I want another challenge, man. When we, when we see somebody get healed, I just can't wait for another. I told somebody last night, I said, we already built that church. I told somebody, I'm looking at the next church. This has already been set in motion. It's a done deal. Amen. Yeah, a church is a people that's not backing down. A church is a people that's one mind, one accord, and a church is, yeah. church is unstoppable. Yeah. Hear me now. I don't think I'm going next Sunday. Well, you ain't the church. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to... I don't, I, don't I don't think I'm going to stay with that drama thing no longer. Now, if God's called you to do something else, that's fine. But if you're just doing that because, you know, because old Mary got a little credit one day, right. hello, you ain't the church. I don't think, I don't feel led. I just don't feel led. It's mighty funny in me. Look here. Ain't nobody led to do nothing for Christ, but they all feel led not to. Ain't nobody be, feel led to, Brother Anthony, but everybody's feel led. I just don't feel led to Amen. take the garbage out no more, Brother Eddie. <laughs> mm. Mm. I got to read something to you. Let's close. Psalms 46. Let's go over there. It's going to knock our socks off right here. Psalms 46. It's going to back up my preaching. It's good to have a backup plan, ain't it? Amen. You want to put it on the screen for me, Brother Jason? He's got to come. This first word is going to knock you out. Can you see it? It's up on the wall. Get your hat. Get your eyes up. God done bless us with something. You know, when, when God starts convicting me, that's the first thing I do. I want to start scribbling around and looking down. So God. Who's refuge? The church. So God is our refuge. I don't know why you wouldn't want to get in it. I mean, it's foolproof. I mean, there ain't no way it can't work. He's got to go with his promise. My wife said, there was no way them blooms going to bust. He was standing on God's promises. You wouldn't hear that. Time. You don't know what I'm talking about, but them blooms up on that table, that boy's on top of that table, them blooms up on it, and they ain't popping. She said, it ain't no way. <laughs> Woo, Corlette, we need a 
Yeah, they ain't. Greta, when that cancer come, we should have said, ain't no way. Will, when cancer comes, it ain't no way. In y'all's business meeting, when you get back, said, I don't know if y'all knew this, said, it ain't no way. Woo! When them nurses down there said, I don't think, I think your wife's had a miscarriage. We don't know if little Addie's going to get it or not. We just said, it ain't no way. Somebody said, I don't know if we're going to have good praise and worship this morning. You'll say, it ain't no way. Woo! I don't know if I'm going to shout this morning or not. It ain't no way I'm not going to shout. I don't know if I'm going to raise it. Ain't no way. I'm going to finish. We got to go. God is our refuge and a strength. It's for the church now. It ain't for just nobody goes to a building every Sunday, Wayne. It don't apply to them. It don't apply to folks that start out in the race. The Bible said the only ones going to win it is the ones that endure to the end. I don't care what doctor. That ain't doctrine. That's Bible. God is our refuge. He's my strength. Now, how much strength he got? I'm trying my best, Tim, to quit. I'm trying. Not only he's my refuge. Not only he's my refuge. Not only he's the one. I mean, he's the ship that I'm in. No longer I to live, but Christ who liveth in me. No, he's my refuge. But not only that, he's my strength. Have you seen anybody whoop God lately? Do you see anybody want to take him on? No. The one that made the heavens and the earth, the dirt, the taters on the hills and the hills and the cattle that's on him. Have you seen anybody? Can anybody do you like Jesus? Can He's our refuge. Somebody. That's all right. I'll shout next time. I'll run. Look. And he's a strength. Can you make it? Shut up, preacher. I'm preaching this. You're preaching the next one. He's our very on time. Very mean, very. Won't never leave you. Present. You can't do something. Somebody said, I'll be there to help you when I can. Sister Linda, I'm a while. So I'll get there when I can. You out there just working yourself to death. By the time you get through, said, I was coming. <laughs> that ain't God. I said, I'm a very present help. Trouble in my way. <laughs> I have to cry sometimes. Therefore, that's what it's there for. That's why you can unbind the thing. That's why you can loose it. If you need to go, go. It don't make no difference. That's why you can loose it. You got to go to the restroom, go. Lord, don't wait on yourself. Get up and go. Therefore, will. Where's that little fellow in them balloons at? Good Lord. Where's the at? My word. Where's the at? Woo, Donnie, did you see him jumping? Therefore. That's what it's there for. That's what it's promised is there for. Therefore, he done said it, and that settles it. It don't make no difference whether I believe it or not. All I got to do is just trust it. Therefore, will we, one who we are, the church, that ain't going to go down. The church ain't trouble. Therefore, will we, Peter, though the earth be removed, Man, this is good stuff right here. Yeah. Rob, ain't this good stuff? Man, if I, if I had any doubt that my name wasn't upon this contract, how he adopted us, how we join heirs with Christ, if I thought that much that I ain't been adopted yet, huh? I, if I thought that I, didn't ha I wasn't in on this inheritance, You'd run down yonder tomorrow to a lawyer's office, get the best one you can. So look here, my father done left a bunch of stuff and I, I got a little doubt where something's right. I don't want to live my whole life and get to the end of this thing and I not have no inheritance. I want to know now the way it is. Therefore, we will not go. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea, let it roll. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, There's a river. There's a river. 
I ain't talking about folks. It may be folks walking up down them halls out there right now. They got a good talk, but they ain't the church. They can't keep the church going. Brother Jason, they ain't got it in them to keep the church going. I don't care how much Bible they got. It ain't in them. I'll tell you again. I'll take the man that drunk a six pack of Budweiser at six o'clock this morning that I walked right in here and said, man, I ain't doing good. But I know God's good. I done failed him this morning. Who ain't it start with? Huh? Most of us, we'd have had a way, we'd have laid down. This morning anyway. Most of us, God just put your name up on the screen and said, just give me their thoughts about six. Give me their thoughts on the screen at six o'clock when they woke up. Tell me whether they wanted to go to church or not. Show me the growth. Oh, oh, we really going? Show me the heart at seven. Show me what they said at 15 to 8. Show me the thought. There is a river. The streams wherefore shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Come on. Where's your doctrine in now? She shall not be moved. I'm talking about the church. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And right early. Won't be late. The heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is with us, Ray. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come. Woo, come. Good Lord, come. 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 Good Lord, come. Jump on the promises, man. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. Behold the plan of God. Behold His purpose. Behold His perfection. One that cannot fail. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations He has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease. In the end of, of it, the earth, he, he breaketh the bow, he cutteth the spirit asunder, he burneth the chariot in fire. Listen. I got it, Brother Eddie. See, if you want to leave this morning, you didn't get it. I was supposed to be somewhere else, you didn't get it. Got my job on mine, didn't get it. Got riding horse on mine, didn't get it. Got shopping on my mind, Macy's, didn't get it. Didn't want to be your soul, didn't get it. Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt thee among the heathen. I will exalt thee in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is a refuge. <laughs> Let's pray. He's an old time God. Thank you for the church, Lord.